Well, good Sunday afternoon to you. This is the program Afternoon Tea, and I am your host, Giselle Elaine Clement. This is brought to you by Pearls of Great Price Empowerment Services, where we are just coming together to have good company, good conversation, share some good information, and of course, have some good tea. And today I have another, you know, every, every Sunday I say I have a special guest, but they really are special to me. And so today I have another guest. She is from the beautiful island of Barbados. Yes. And she is coming to share with us today on the topic of women's pelvic care and we are going to speak specifically about vaginal steaming some of you may have heard about it for some of you this is a new thing well we're going to get into this discussion this afternoon so call your friend call your neighbor call your aunt tell them afternoon tea is on get some good tea brewing and let's chat so without further ado let me bring my guest in let's give her a warm trinidad and tobago welcome welcome katrina <laughs> thank you so much Giselle, for having me thank you oh my goodness yeah katrina it has been i was trying to calculate over 10 years i'm going to leave it like that so we don't date ourselves too much but i met katrina over 10 years ago in bermuda at a conference and you see this beautiful smile that you are seeing that's how she approached me and she said hello and i was like okay <laughs> and we were like best buddies throughout the conference and since then we have just kept in touch we have come full circle she is now fully into entrepreneurship and I have followed suit. And so this afternoon, we have brought her in to share her expertise with us on the topic of women's pelvic health, specifically speaking about vaginal steaming. But let me just give you a bit more about her. She has been the managing director of Sunrise Wellness for the past eight and a half years. Out of that, there are two other arms, Waves of Bliss, and orgasmic intelligence this operates out of barbados and she has been a woman's pelvic health coach and massage therapist for the same time she believes that in order to heal the world women must first heal themselves and so she has two mantras and i like them i want to read them to you i have given up on perfection I live to live a life authentically. You hear that? And her second mantra is that she inspires women to live authentically, to love unconditionally, and to heal holistically. Wow, <laughs> Katrina. Welcome again to the program. Thank you. The honor is mine, Giselle. Thank you. So, Katrina, tell us. We were in the corporate world and this is like a total 360 as i said black white chalk and cheese how did you find yourself on this path tell us a bit about that <laughs> wow that that's that started is as a personal journey actually yes. and uh, some 11 years ago i was on my fourth child i'm a mom yes. of four Yes. And uh, I found that after having, you know, baby after baby, and I didn't take care of my pelvic health, after my fourth child, my pelvic floor muscles were, were practically shattered. I urinated like little drips, became incontinent, little drips of urine will yes. leak out whenever I sneeze, coughed or laughed. And I had a heavy, heavy cycle, which was like ridiculously going for like seven, 10 to 14 days a month. Wow. <laughs> basis yes and so at that time i knew that I, I knew that i needed to do something about my health but how i got into it, it wasn't really uh, the way it ended up what happened was i, I got introduced to uh, something called yoni eggs and yes. uh, i started to use yoni eggs and that when i purchased the yoni egg it was really for for vaginal toning you know okay. so yes uh but then i realized the holistic uh, healing that's involved 
And that journey just from we only eggs and I then started to do more training. I opened my business and uh, started to do more studies, massage therapy, as I said, and became a women's pelvic health coach. Yes. Um, training in vaginal steaming as well. And, and so I like just married all of them together and ways of bliss and the services that one of the services that we offer is vaginal steaming. So it started as a personal journey. Personal journey, yeah. yeah. And when wow. I saw the, the, the transformation within myself, the healing within myself, I said, well, you know, I know so many women that suffer from these kind of things. So why not offer it as a service? And, and so that's pretty much the journey. Wow. What was the reception like in Barbados to this? Was it like, what is this you're coming here with oh, Katrina? Oh, this is totally like, new to us. Yes, it was like, what? Uh, the thing about it, especially with the vaginal steaming. Yes. What really catapulted vaginal steaming into the, I would say, uh, the realm of acceptance in certain uh, spaces was when it was popularized on uh, one of the American uh, programs, I think it was um, one of housewives. I, can, I don't watch the shows, okay? So right. I can't, but, but they started to speak about vaginal steaming as well as the only eggs. And so, you know, it became really popular and then it started trending. Yes. And so then people became a little more open, but I still still get a lot of questions, which is good. I which do, is good, and, yes. yeah, I love the questions because it helps me to hone my skills and the craft itself. Mm -hmm. And also builds credibility as well. Well, when you're able to represent what you do and offer yes. service that's of a high quality, wow! Then, you know that's that's how it grows. But it wasn't easy, and it, wow. and it isn't. But it's something I love because I love a challenge. I love yes. challenges. Yes. And, and and if you know, and if you go and you look at her web, her her Facebook page, and start to do some research on Katrina. She's a wonderful orator. She loves to communicate. So asking questions and, and giving that type of education, I know you would really, really love that. And so that's, that's what this program is about. As I said, good company, good conversation, and good information, sharing, enlightening, and really educating people to make more informed decisions and better decisions. Um, so tell us then, what is vaginal steaming? Well, vaginal steaming, and, and you know, there's so many terms for it. You will hear of the, the V steam, V yeah. spa, hip bath, uh, Chinese, uh, that's that's in the Chinese and Asian, mm -hmm. uh, bajo, bajo, sorry, uh, uh, so many names, uh, vaginal right. smoking, yoni steaming. It's an actually based in an ancient practice. Okay. Uh, many centuries where the woman would sit over a pot of steaming herbs mm -hmm. and uh, the medicinal property of the herbs rise up into the steam into the vaginal canal because the vaginal canal the tissues within the vaginal canal are one of the most uh, easy to absorb yes uh, into the body so it goes into the vaginal canal then it diffuses into the tissue the and, and eventually it will get into the bloodstream as well. So it helps with overall womb wellness in a sense. And, and it's not steaming like vegetables. Let me just make that clear. It's not steaming like vegetables, it's therapeutic, it's relaxing, it is very healing. I, I'm glad you said that because you know, you get that imagery that steaming, you know, like, you, wow, you, would you really want, is this safe? You know, so I'm glad you kind of plug that in there. It's not like you're going to steam a pot of vegetables. I love it. So then what is the cultural significance? You said, you know, it's an ancient practice, different cultures uh, practiced this. So what is the cultural significance to Caribbean women it, it, as it relates to vaginal steaming? Well, in reality, it, it started in uh, their evidence. This evidence of it originating in places in Central America, uh, like the Mayan culture specifically, yes. uh, in Guatemala, Belize, and in Africa as well, Mozambique, South Africa. Mm. And so these are where our people were taken from. Yes. Uh, so we, we were transported, as you know, through the transatlantic slave um, and it was it it unfortunately when mm -hmm. we, our people came here of course it was still being practiced like in some uh islands right now in jamaica st vincent um and other as i said belize and those other countries in south and central america 
are practicing them. However, over time, I remember um, when my grandmother used to use herbs and she used to sit with these herbs, but at that time I didn't know. Yes. Yes. I yes. Didn't know. And uh, so it it is definitely part of our culture, but you know, mainstream medical um, services came on board and, you know, it's, it's more acceptable, it's conventional and whatnot. Mm. And so we came away from it. And, and obviously because it's an ancient culture, it's a, a therapeutic, ancient therapeutic um, technique. Mm -hmm. Studies that have been done are not as widespread, but there are many studies that have been done that show the benefits. However, in the medical fraternity, it is not, uh, especially in the West, I should say, it is not, it is not um, pushed. This is not, you know, you were here doctors yes. because that, but in India where it is actually part deeply rooted in the culture, you have gynecologists who recommend v steaming. Wow. Wow. Yes. So it's yeah. just the culture. So, mm -hmm. so, you know, we're just coming back to our culture in the Caribbean is building, but the thing about it is that, uh, you know, you want to make sure that in attempting to be steam or seeking a vaginal steam therapist that you know is someone who's well trained and, and you know mm -hmm. has experience because now yeah. because you know it's popular people are popping up everybody's jumping on board I, I i will come back to that because that's one of the questions that i have but i'm glad that you touched on the word acceptance and western culture because there has always been this juxtaposition between medical science and these uh alternative the herbal tradition you know medical science has uh evidence as they say proven yes. by clinical trials and the herbal tradition alternative me medicine we more have the anecdotal uh, stories and there has always been this Okay, so I'm glad that you touched on that because one one uh, statement made, and I want to read it for our audience today, is that vaginal steaming is unnecessary mm. and that the claim to heal these diseases and these issues is unsubstantiated. What do you say in response to that? I know you started there, but give me a little more. What do you yeah. say? What do you think? Well, you know, when they say that vaginal steam isn't necessary, they're speaking specifically the fact that the vaginal canal is, is a self-cleaning organ, right? Uh, however, our bowels are self-cleaning as well, but sometimes we do need to take uh, a laxative, something to cleanse, to help detox. It's the same with the uh, with vaginal steaming. So vaginal steaming is is really a practice that helps to support the optimal functioning of the vaginal canal and the surrounding organs. Okay, so it helps to support. And so if you're you have uh, some kind of imbalance, then the vaginal steaming can help bring bring that restore that balance. In many cases, depending on the type of gynecological issue that we're speaking about. But yes. I've had clients, so even when I, when I first studied, you know, researching it and whatnot, you know, I've heard of the benefits and whatnot, but practicing it and actually offering it as a service and having clients, I've now seen firsthand the healing wow. properties of it. So I have uh, clients who uh, had bouts of infertility and, yes. I now have babies, you know, from the steaming. Yes. So that's, that's definitely one of the, the high points of yes. all the service here in Barbados. Uh, so, so you know, there's so many things, the PCOS, especially yes. suffer from PCOS, yes. endometriosis, and, and just simply women who have uh, irregular periods or heavy bleeding and cramping, it helps to significantly reduce the heavy bleeding and cramping and the PCOS endometriosis, especially mm -hmm. fibroids, helps to significantly reduce the symptoms that they experience. And so, uh, you know, Giselle, I, you know, I, I always aim to do better in my industry, in my field. And yes. I'm, I'm, because of COVID has been delayed a bit, but moving forward, definitely going to be looking to do some research where yes. we have control studies where I can speak specifically to uh, how they, it helps because you know the women they're just coming and having this service and then they're going away you know mm -hmm. not sure what else they're doing of course i give them advice what to do but they're getting good results but you know yes 
you know, you need you need that kind of credibility. You need research. So that's right. And I'm glad you said that because you know, in our other life, we we were heavily involved in research, and so it helps build that credibility. But also, as Caribbean people, we have things unique to us. And so if we come forward with the research done in the Caribbean region to show what we are doing and how we are advancing the, the research into this type of tradition, I think it can only do better for the acceptance of this into our wellness and personal development yeah. practices. So I'm really glad you know, it's, it's on the drawing board and, and I know uh, you will advance in that area. So then you Vaginal steaming, it's just one element, but I'm getting the sense that this can be part and parcel of a woman's wellness approach. Would you say that? Would you agree? Yeah, with that? I would yeah. definitely say it's com it's complementary. So I, there's no uh, traditional medicine and alternative medicine. I call it complementary. Complementary, exactly. yes. 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 So a yes. woman can definitely include it in her wellness program. So yes. she doesn't necessarily have to have an issue, but just to maintain that wellness, that vaginal wellness. It, it's, it's a very, oh, Giselle, I don't know if you've ever had this service, but it's so- Not yet. <laughs> <laughs> Not yet. Yes, it is so very relaxing. And when yes. I see my clients come into the, to this, uh, to the office and, you know, they come in, they're stressed or whatever. And, you know, they sit and they're like, and these are especially first timers, you know, the, mm -hmm. the, the, the um, repeat customers, you know, they come in like really bubbly, like, oh yeah, I'm ready for my V-Steam, but the first timers, yes. you know, they're not sure, you know, they did the research, you know, they ask questions, but still the time has come for them to sit on my pot. And the thing about it, with the service I offer, it's not just a matter of coming and sitting on the V-Steam's pot, but yes. I also offer, I always looking to add uh, added value I offer the uh, special womb wellness massage, which is done mm -hmm. before you sit on the okay. VCD pot. So the wellness massage helps to not only relax the woman, but helps with circulation, digestion. Mm -hmm. It helps to, mm -hmm. uh, in a sense, give the uterus more space, allows then more blood to flow as well. So they have the massage and then by the time when I see them transform afterwards, it's like floating mm. out of the office. So wow. it's, it's a good experience. Wow. Uh, ladies, are you hearing this? I hope you are. And as I tell them, Katrina, please take notes because I'm <laughs> taking notes. This is the program Afternoon Tea, if you're just joining us. And my guest, Katrina Eiffel out of Barbados. She is a woman's pelvic health coach one of the hats she wears so we're talking to her in that capacity today let me just say hello to a couple of people katrina hi portia thanks for coming hi kushandra that's that's your your, your home girl she's from barbados so she's here supporting you hi blessed child uh hi vanessa thanks for joining uh so katrina you you brought something up just a moment ago and i want to touch on that complementary medicine that was one of the terms i saw as I did my, my reading uh, for this session. And it seems as if it's, it's a middle ground that, that practitioners are taking. They're not saying, you know, it's, it, it doesn't have to be either or, as you're saying. It doesn't have to be alternative or medical, but right. complementary. So something like vaginal steaming to deal with whatever issue that you're dealing with as a woman can be included in how you treat this issue as complementary to hardcore medical treatment. That's yes. the understanding. Exactly. Am I saying it correctly? Mm -hmm. Yes, because what it is with, with clients who come, all right, so specifically, especially the PCOS and endometrial, uh, sorry, mm -hmm. uh, uh, clients who suffer from uterine fibroid. Yes. So when they come to me, I, you know, I, I don't have access to ultrasound and those kind of um, tools, those kind of equipment. So they will come with their report from their gynecologist. Okay. And okay. So then, uh, going through a period of the steam in the regime, then they will book another appointment and then they will have it measured. I, I do not have the capacity to measure the, the size of the fibroids and yes. uh, how many uh, uh, piece, how many sits are on the ovaries and whatnot. So, you know, I don't have access to that 
internal view in a sense. So, so working along with their gynecologist and, and, you know, of course, in some cases, medication may still be needed. Yes. Uh, you know, so, so, you know, it's complementary work hand in hand. Hand and in hand. Yes. 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 Yeah, it's just like any other disease. For example, you know, diabetes. And sometimes, oh, I'm not taking what the doctor prescribed anymore because I'm on herbs. Right. No. <laughs> we, we can go down a complementary kind of route. And I'm getting the sense that's the same thing you're, you're, you're saying exactly. with the practice of uh, V-steaming and other like mm -hmm. uh, practices. I, I like that. You started uh, to give us uh, a bit about the issues that could be treated with vaginal steaming. Could you just go over and like give us a list, go down a list, yeah. so to speak? So um, I have clients who, who will suffer from, a peri who are going through, I should say, going through perimenopausal phase, which I'm at that phase right now as well, too. So, mm -hmm. you know, they have the uh, hormone, hormonal imbalance or they have infrequent or irregular periods. It mm -hmm. helps to regulate the cycle. Postmenopause, so those who are actually menopausal, it helps with uh, to decrease the vaginal dryness. So it helps to keep the vaginal uh, canal alive and juicy and succulent. Mm -hmm. It also helps with heavy bleeding and cramping. Mm -hmm. women who suffer from heavy bleeding and cramping during the cycle it helps us significantly and in most cases uh, actually eliminate the clotting mm -hmm. reduce the number of days and the heavy bleeding mm -hmm. it also helps as i said with pcos and yeah. this uh, and fibroids uterine fibroids helps us significantly reduce the symptoms that these women experience the discomfort helps with oh another thing as well so as women who have um hemorrhoids who suffer from yes. hemorrhoids okay. it also helps reduce the hemorrhoids as well of uh, just overall womb wellness and on a more on an on another level as well it helps to remove stagnant energy mm -hmm. from the space so uh, I, I also couple when you're sitting on the v-steam of uh, mm -hmm. like a, a visualization okay the womb so it helps to remove stagnant energy mm -hmm. so women who suffer from having that like that dark blood at the beginning or the end of the cycle mm -hmm. it helps to renew, uh, re remove that altogether so it is a very gentle cleansing a uh, mm -hmm. healing process mm -hmm. and if it's not a sit bath i need to uh, be very clear with that because you don't actually sit in the hot water, please. Okay. Because okay. That you will get a skull, and mm -hmm. you're supposed to sit a certain number of inches above the steam itself. So we have now on the internet, we have you know do it at home, steam at home, which is beautiful. However, some suppliers are selling you the sit bath plastic container. That that's that, something I had to ask about. Oh, yes. Yes. Okay, yes. yes. So I do not recommend that because that is plastic. And when you put that hot steaming water into mm -hmm. it, it actually melts away a layer of the plastic. And then that, of course, goes That's into what they the said, yeah. Toxins and stuff like that. The properties so in not, the plastic. Exactly. Yeah. yeah, it's not a sit bath. You have to be suspended over the steam. Okay, okay. so Katrina, take us through now then. How is it actually done? So you're starting to describe this so we can get a visual. So you're saying, okay, I come to you, take us through the process of how is this vaginal steaming done? Right. So when you come to me, definitely the first thing you do is you will complete the intake form. I need okay. to know certain information. If you have what, you know, what is specifically you're coming to have the V steam. I look at history as well. If you were diagnosed with anything in particular, who did diagnose it, how long you had it. So, you know, some basic background information. Also to know if you have, if there are any contraindications as well too, I would need to know that. Mm -hmm. And then once we do that, we, you come and you have a sit down consultation with me, where mm -hmm. we go through the intake form, I ask questions, get you comfortable, answer any questions you may have. Yes. So that first intake is, <sighs> to bring you okay. down a bit, relax you, re you know, alleviate any questions, any concerns you may have. And yes. while that's being done, my assistant, she will be preparing the herbs. So the herbs mm -hmm. are, are boiled. Right. Um, and then the herbs are poured into the steaming pot. Mm -hmm. And uh, we put this, the, well, this heater rather. 
and then we put the heater into the steaming pot. So our steaming pots are made of wood. Okay. 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 Yeah. And so then when it's time to go into the, the room, once you're ready to go, you know, I always make sure that I've answered all questions. Mm -hmm. And then we go into the steam pot room. It's, you know, it's, a, it's, a, it's not dark, but it's, it's warmly lit, nice sooth, soothing music playing, candles, mm -hmm. you know, it's a very, it's a, a, an ambiance for relaxation and self-healing, self-love. Yes. And then you sit on the, well, you, obviously you remove your clothes and mm -hmm. you have the steam gowns that you change into. And then we go through once the customer is coming for a, a full steam, because we have the full steam mm -hmm. and we also have the express where you just come and sit on the pot. But once you have the full steam, then you lay on our table and we do mm -hmm. the massage. The massage, the okay. Oils and stuff like that. And then uh, you, you sit there for a while of allow the warmth to to penetrate with a warm bottle and then once that's done uh, and and when that's happening i always i encourage the women to bring their attention to where they feel the warmth mm -hmm. and that's the womb space so it's an immersive immersive so if women you know we tend to not pay attention cut off from the waist down for vaginal canal or womb spaces for different mm. reasons. But this is an opportunity for the woman to, to bring her attention to her womb space and immerse into their, you know, through fear base, uh, how we were socialized, you know, we we're told not to, to focus on that area, but that's our power source. Yes. That's what we're through all life. Life, mm. life, yes, um, yes. So I bring the woman into that space. And uh, then after that, then she's guided how to sit on the steam pot so it's no slouching, it's, it's, it's a city wreck, legs open wide, okay? So okay. there's nothing, quote unquote, ladylike about sitting on a steam pot. You have to open your legs. Okay. If you close your legs, mm -hmm. the steam can't get in. So you open wide, okay. yes. yes. And then you sit there for a period wow. of 30 minutes. 40 uh, minutes, four zero? 30, 30 minutes. Three zero, three zero. Yes, mm -hmm. generally three thirty minutes. Okay. Uh, some, some practitioners do longer, but I, I work with thirty minutes. Yes. And then there are two types. You can have a no heater, V steam, mm -hmm. where you just boil the. And this is mostly the ones that are, are done at home, yes. where you uh, sit, you boil the herbs, and you put them in a, a heat resistant container, and then you sit over that and just allow the steam to to rise into the vaginal canal. So we yeah. offer the non-steam, the non no heater face steam and the heater face steam as well too. Okay, are you able to give us some insight of what these herbs are that goes into the steam? Yeah, well, we use uh, different herbs for different things. So generally, oh, okay. yeah, mm -hmm. but we have um, one of the herbs, we have local herbs that are okay. found in Barbados. Yes. And we also import some of our herbs as well too. Yes, but we're we're moving to as much as possible work mm -hmm. with locally uh, indigenous, well, locally uh, sourced herbs here in Barbados. Right. Because, uh, yeah. Since I uh, and and thanks to COVID, you know, I had intended uh, for a number of, of months to transition, but COVID kind of like catapulted me. Everything into that, here, you know, and uh, so I'm getting really good reviews with some of the the uh, with the the new blend from formulas that we've been using so wow yeah, the local herb that we use is called uh, something called daniyama i'm not sure what it's called in, in that in Trinidad. Trinidad yeah i'll have right. to do some research myself yeah. okay. That's, okay. One, that's one of the base herbs we use the raspberry leaf as well mm -hmm. uh, mother's wort but the thing is that you will find different practitioners using different herbs. Like in the okay. Mayan culture, traditionally they would use like a lot of marigold, rosemary, chamomile, uh, the same Daniyama as well too. Yes. Um, yarrow, uh, oregano as well too. Yes. Um, but the thing is the most important thing, if you're trying to, if you intend to use um, herbs to do it at home, please make sure that you use dried herbs, okay? Dry, okay. dry, allow the dry the herbs to dry first, first. yes wow go ahead sorry yeah uh yes yeah, so that you know you may have herbs for um astringent properties for, mm -hmm. for toning as well uh those that are um have affinity for um uni urinary uh and reproductive organs that you know affiliate right. with them so that's really raspberry leaf that's very 
very uh, popular. Even you could drink that a tea as a tea. And some of the the steam herbal blend formulas, depending on uh, what the ingredients, can be used as a tea as well. Oh, yes. Okay. yes. <laughs> wow, Katrina, you see, I'm getting excited. I can't even write what you're saying fast enough. <laughs> Ladies, this is the program Afternoon Tea. I'm here having tea with my good, good friend, Katrina Eiffel from Barbados. She's a woman's pelvic health coach. She is just spilling the tea, as they say helping us to understand this thing called vaginal steaming as it relates to women's health, pelvic health, that is. Mm -hmm. um, two questions, Katrina. You see why I'm excited about you just starting your research? So you are speaking about herbs that are local to Barbados, and then I'm in Trinidad, so then we have to do that kind of cross to see, okay, what is it? Walled in Trinidad yeah. to see if it's the same herb, and that will be so insightful to yeah. practitioners in the region to mm -hmm. see our studies done. Yeah. And oh, so that that got me excited for a bit. Wow, 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 wow! And the second thing you said about the using the herbs, can you reuse or should you reuse herbs if you're doing it at home? I don't. I don't recommend that you reuse the herbs because they've served their purpose. And so, but what I recommend is after you've done your V-Steam, it's like a, a cycle, you know, just completing the cycle. We, we receive the herbs from Mama Earth. So yes. I just recommend that when you're finished, you then also release the used herbs back into the soil, into Mama Earth. Because also what I, I recommend while women are on the steam pot that they visualize that they are, you know, inhaling through the vaginal canal, the, the medicinal property of the herbs. And then when they're breathing out, they're releasing all the stagnant, unwanted energies from their womb space. So of trauma, those that they may know of and those they may not even know of that have been tucked away. And so that also energetically is right. in the, the mixture. So we ask that you just release Throw it. That away. Allow Mama Earth to then transmute that energy however she pleases. Wow. We are getting some questions, Katrina, so I'll bring that in right now. So viewers, if you have questions, please pop them in now. You don't want to let Katrina go without asking your questions. So I'll bring a question in now. Uh, Jillian is asking, is this steam similar to the one you do after having a baby or giving birth, or is it something different? Uh, she, yeah, what is very popular is the sitz bath where you actually sit in the cool water and you have it so that it may be infused with herbs as well and you sit in it so that's the sits bath but this one is also very good for post delivery as well once you've received okay. your clear from your uh, gynecologist then you can also do but what she's speaking about directly after that mm -hmm. is the sits bath so it's two there are two different things but still two very good healing uh, ancient healing technology wow. But, but yeah, but this is, wow. is both, they're both very good. Wow. And, and coming to mind, it's not vaginal steaming, but I remember as a child, you know, suffering from constipation and my mother would tell me, go out or she would prepare it and say, sit on this for a while. And that would help with the constipation. Yeah. So steaming in itself is something that has been used. We know yeah. about it. We're not recording and documenting, but our mothers and our grandmothers, yeah. and even further back, they have passed on this tradition. So mm -hmm. I think pretty much people have a concept or an idea, especially in the Caribbean, about steaming, but specifically to vaginal steaming, that's why you are here to educate us and to help us understand its place in our wellness development. Uh, Katrina, this month is PCOS month. Yes. They is. have placed an emphasis on it. So I just want to go back to PCOS specifically. Mm -hmm. uh, if someone comes to you and this is the ailment that they have, how would you treat is is it a different steam that a person suffering with pcos would have to undertake could you just give us a bit yeah. more insight into that well with the pcos generally depending on the what the symptoms the client is experiencing mm -hmm. they may need to be put on a weekly regime where they will get the v steam done on a weekly basis and and it's and this is the full steam 
So the okay. full service that they will have on a weekly basis. And we do that for a period of two to three months. And then we gauge then afterwards if we need to to uh, uh, lengthen the the uh, intervals so they may come okay. every two weeks. Uh, but that's generally, if they, it's on a case-by-case -case basis. I've had uh, PCOS clients who have come every two weeks and have had good results. And then some that have to come on a weekly basis. I've okay. had a couple as well that have had to come more than uh, once a week as well too. So it's, it's based on, obviously, on, as I said, a case-by-case -case basis. We have some clients who have uh, very mild symptoms but have been diagnosed with PCOS and those who have like really severe symptoms of spotting in between and, and not just spotting but bleeding profusely uh, between cycles and whatnot. So it's, it's a, and then of course the, the herbs. So the herbs may be different, the blend may be different, but the quantities may also vary as well. So the formula changes according to what the, the needs are of the client. Okay, because yeah. that's what I was trying to understand. Mm -hmm. If it's just a, a generic steam mm -hmm. or but they're saying no, depending mm -hmm. on the yes. needs, you formulate yes. the type of steam bath yes. that that okay. Mm -hmm. Wow, yes. wow, wow, yes. wow, wow, wow. And it's not steam bath. It's oh. not steam bath. Don't we say bath because when people hear of steam bath, they think immersed in their skin. Exactly. Oh. No. Okay. Yes, yes. yes. So you see why, why you're here? Let me get the correct terminology. <laughs> wow, wow. People, get your questions in before she leaves because I am certainly asking my questions. <laughs> Katrina, we're in the age where information is at our fingertips. And so people will want to do things for themselves. We have that type of, of society now where people are well able to, to follow and do things for themselves. And you're already touching it that some people may be uh, trying this at home. How would you advise someone who wants to try it out at home first? What would you say to that? Well, first and foremost, if you are not familiar with the use of herbs, find a, a reputable uh, supplier of herbs to, and, and this is V Steam, so someone who's selling it as a package already. However, you know, you can contact me as well. Uh, yes. Sure, you know, depending on where, you know, if the, the countries, if we have the same type of herbs and names, uh, I will also be able to give you guidance going right. forward. But get a, a blend. If you are comfortable, you can find uh, Rosemary uh, Mother's War. These are some, some of uh, the, another one that is commonly used, Rosemary as well, uh, Rose Petals. Mm -hmm. All right, so the, these those are four that I can think of that are are, are good for these. These are specifically for uh, maintenance and just uh, okay. Uh, people. Okay, right. And then you would boil it. So you just want like about a uh, three quarter of a cup yes. to a medium sized pot. Let the pot the water come to a boil, and then you. So these are leaves. So leaves are are steamed. Okay, mm -hmm. you don't have to boil them if you have others that have root and whatnot, then those would need to be boiled for a few minutes. Yes. But with the leaves, you just, uh, once the water comes to a boil, you pour them in yes. and uh, turn off the heat and cover it for a few minutes and let it steam for a bit, let the, the medicinal properties infuse into the water. Mm -hmm. And then uh, preferably transfer that, uh, the, the, uh, the fusion, the water fusion into don't use the same pot. Don't use the same hot pot, okay? Because we right. want to avoid skulls, burns at all costs, okay? Yes. Because that's one of the uh, things that is really spreading on the internet as far as uh, the medical fraternity specifically speaking about one, one woman who scalded herself, but there are no details as to how she went around uh, doing her VC. Yes. To ensure that when you put it in a, a heat-resistant pot, and you sit over it so preferably don't don't squat because you don't want your knees your thighs to get tired because you know mm -hmm. you can off balance and whatnot but if you can find a a, a chair with a hole yes. you can build something you want to be ideally suspended if you don't have a, a heater like a, a crock pot you know like a crock pot 
I was now going to ask. Yes, yes. yes. Pot, but if you have if you have a crock pot, you want to be which is giving you constant heat. Mm -hmm. You want to be suspended at least ten to twelve inches above that steam. Right, because okay. I was getting the imagery of a crock pot, that kind right. of material. Yes. Okay, so yes. all right, and yes. suspended ten to ten to twelve inches. Ten above to twelve the inches above. Yes. So okay. if you're using uh, the the no heat, where mm -hmm. it's just you pour the herbs, the, the boiled herbs into a pot, and you then sit over it, you can mm -hmm. go um you know a little closer, but still don't go like six inches. Like you will see like these plastic containers that people are selling which are they really the sits bath mm -hmm. they are you're actually like you're like a, few, a couple inches over that and that, that's mm -hmm. dangerous that's very dangerous even if you put it over your toilet bowl that's okay. for cold that's for cool cool water oh, okay not for boiling water so you are yes. not to touch the water you're not to be just inches off of the steam because yes. that's how we result in, in burns and skulls. Wow, I, I thank you for, you know, bringing that awareness if you wanted to give it a try at home. But the flip question to that, the flip side to that, if I'm looking for a practitioner, as you hinted, you know, sometimes when something becomes popular, everyone sets up shop. So mm -hmm. if I'm looking, I mean, you're in Barbados, so if I'm in Trinidad and I'm trying to get someone like you, Right. What should I look for in a woman's pelvic coach or someone who can give me the service of a vaginal steam? What should I look for? Well, you definitely want to make sure that they are trained. They are trained, uh, whether it is uh, as a vaginal steam therapist, but they have training. Uh, massage therapy is a, is a good background as well, too. You want to ensure that they have. So you have to personally basically ask questions because there okay. will be some people who will offer a certificate, you know, and say, well, you know, I'm certified in X, Y, Z. But yes. then you check, you know, the credibility of the training and whatnot. It may not be so credible. So it really comes down to asking questions. Okay. Don't just because someone says, oh, we're opening our new V-Steam spa. You just go and book an appointment. Go and ask questions. Definitely okay. go in. Uh, contact them, DM if it's uh, on their social media, ask questions because not everyone is going to, who is offering V-Steam or actually offers a good V-Steam experience is mm. going to quote unquote certified. Okay. okay. So, okay. so you want to, at the end of the day, make sure you ask questions and then also find out anyone else who's been to them, what their experience has been like. Is right. it a good experience? Is it a bad experience? So it's, it comes down to asking questions. Visit yes. the, the location. Is it clean? Yes, yes. What should I look for at that location? Is Give it, us a little bit more of that. Yes. Yes. So you definitely want to make sure that you have privacy. Okay. Yes. So you may have you may have cubicles uh, that are next to each other, but you want to ensure that, uh, especially at the intake uh, session, that you your personal information is not in earshot of other people so you want to make sure that you have that privacy so a private room where you are having a conversation with the vc uh, therapist prior mm -hmm. to uh if you are in a cubicle with other people or, or in a room with number a number of cubicles you want to make sure that there is a a, a some kind of partition between you. you shouldn't be able to see the other person next to you unless you're doing a v-steam party you know mm -hmm. with a number of your girlfriends and okay you want, yeah you ask questions ask them what is their process for for cleaning their their v-steam pots prior to and after each okay. uh, session uh look at uh, you can ask what type of herbs they're using ask okay. to see, uh, you can even ask if, if it's possible to see how it's done. Mm -hmm. You want to see where, you know, the area that they're preparing the herbs and whatnot, you know, is it clean environment? Uh, you know, you want to make sure as well that you want to see them actually sanitize the V-Steam pot before right. you put it on it. Okay. Katrina, wow. This is so reassuring to hear that you welcome this type of questioning and exploration yes. before from your client. Because yes. one, we have a more knowledgeable clientele. 
they they read and they come to you knowing things and they're yes. going to ask so mm -hmm. i'm really glad to hear that you welcome that and yeah. we are within our rights to ask of these course. types of questions yes this is your most sacred space so you have to ask you know i am you know you know uh, some women many women will go to the gynecologists and whatnot and you, you know you, you come away with a prescription or they and, tell you, X, and you say so so you know so why are you getting it they're like i don't know I did not. So like you have yes. to ask. Yes. How, how this is a sacred space. Wow. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Wow. It's I like that. All life comes. So we have to honor to that. Ask. Yes. Yeah. And ask. Yeah. Wow, Katrina, we have some questions coming in. Let me take them at this point. Uh Omed is asking, is this recommended for women of any age? Yes, definitely. I take I have clients who are younger of under 16 and obviously they need parental consent and the, mm -hmm. and the parent needs to accompany them as well mm -hmm. during the entire process uh but yeah any woman and even women who have had hysterectomy whether it's partial or total hysterectomy because you still have your vaginal canal you oh, know right. and because okay. you have a hysterectomy and you're still enjoying a beautiful uh sex life you want to ensure that, you know, the vaginal canal is still moist and, you know, you're not having that friction through vaginal dryness. So the vaginal steam helps to realive and rejuvenate the vaginal canal from any age. So especially uh, with young girls who are about to menstruate or have started to menstruate. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And, wow. and up to any age, yeah, women of all ages. Wow. And another question from Blessed Child. I think she wants to know about you. Are uh, your clients more mature women or younger women? What would you say? A mixture. A mixture. Have a mix I, I have I have young women in their twenties and up. And then I have grown women. I think my 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 eldest was like in her in her sixties who've come for okay. VC. So you right. know the spectrum of women. Yeah wow 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 thank you we have a few more minutes with katrina this hour flies so quickly so yes. if you want to get your question in get it in now final thoughts katrina we've been talking about holistic and wellness and and development how would you encourage the women listening to you this evening to really get a personal wellness plan in place that may include vaginal steaming but what would you say to them why is it important to think about all of this as i look at myself and my development as a woman and my wellness why well in reality we are women as women we give so much to our children to the family to our husbands to our partners to to the church to our jobs to the organizations the clubs we give 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 yes. Yes. and there's so much so much you can give if you do not replenish then you become ill yes right so you need to take time for yourself and, and even with this wellness plan, I would go as far as to say uh, an active self-love and wellness mm. plan, mm. right? So, so we need to start with self first because if you look throughout history, we have women who are becoming, uh, this is like astronomically the, the gynecological issues that are cropping up. And we have, I have clients that are starting young age, like pre, like preteens being diagnosed with PCOS and endometriosis and whatnot. We need to take our health more seriously and starting from the inside out. We find that generally speaking, you know, we're, we're more concerned with the exterior ensuring that, you know, or, you know, and which is fine, which is fine. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But we need to work from the inside out. Balance, yes. Exactly, there yes. is that balance is needed. So look at it as just 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 loving yourself unconditionally yes. give yourself the love that you know that you deserve and the kind of love that you would love to attract into your life wow wow katrina yeah. you know as you made that last point i'm thinking when you go to the doctor uh, and you say i have stress i'm stressed if you notice now doctors are usually asking different types of questions they're asking 
what are you worrying about or are there any issues that you're dealing with because mm -hmm. That is why you're seeing a physical manifestation of some yes. ailment. Yes. So I'm getting the sense that this self-love is really yes. important because mm -hmm. without it, we then see the physical yes. manifestations of the PCOS yes. and all the diseases that yes. we as women deal yes, with. Yes, because we went, we as women tend to hold a lot hold in our own spaces. Yes. And yes. then so if that if you're not on you know cognizant of how to clear that energy or that you're cognizant that you're actually holding that energy in your, in your womb space, then that can become stagnant and then manifest into all these different uh, diseases of uh, gynecological and pelvic born diseases that we're seeing popping up from very young ages. So it's 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 imperative at this stage. Okay, we, we, we have one question slipping in. Great, Jillian, I, I'm going to get it in. She wants you to speak to the younger women who are listening. She says, some young women think this is a long time or an old age practice. What can you tell these young ladies to eradicate this type of mentality? Because I know you speak to uh, young people in Barbados a lot. You go to the schools, you're very involved in that. So what can you tell the young women of Trinidad and Tobago listening to you? Don't wait for Cardi B to tell you that V steaming. <laughs> Let me drink some tea for that one. Mm -hmm. it, yes, it starts at home uh, as young people. You know, it is because it's not. You know, it's not trending in that space. It's not seen as yes. flamboyant. When you come home to yourselves, mm -hmm. you are bringing. Uh, you're you're living. Uh, it's like your power just 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 magnifies mm -hmm. and it helps you to stand in your power so yes. you know it's you know don't wait for the, the 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 influencers and these people to tell us that is for you yes you need to educate these influencers this is the way that's to right that's, that's right what, that's it, right yeah. no one and can I, take it away from you once you mm -hmm. understand and practice these these and I like that imagery you use. You are able to stand in your power, and I get the understanding because I am now aware and I accept who I am. I can stand, but then it takes a, a sustained power to then walk in that power. Exactly. So if you educate yourself earlier, you can start walking yes. earlier and have a sustained life walking yes, in that definitely. power. Woo. And you know, Giselle, as well too, you know, we need as women to understand that we have that ability to heal ourselves. You know, so, right. so even in going to the doctor, the gynecologist and being prescribed a whole set of medicines, if you are not doing what you need to do, mm -hmm. you're still gonna suffer on some level. Wow. So, so when you know that you are part of your healing process, mm. it, it's very liberating, it's extremely liberating. We need to take that ownership back, take yes. it back, take it back. Wow, wow, wow. Katrina, if we want to contact you all the way in Barbados, if it, yes. if it were not for COVID, we could just pop on over. But if, if someone wants to contact you, where can they contact you? Right. So you can find me on uh, Facebook and IG, Waves of Bliss. That's W-A-V-E-S of Bliss. And uh, we have the, uh, or, uh, what do you call it, website as well waves mm -hmm. of bliss bb.com okay. yes. or you can uh, whatsapp me on uh, area code 246 266 4276 that's area code 246 266 4276 uh, so that's how you find me if you want to um, i'm also on facebook katrina eiffel but if it's pertaining to free steaming or the services that we offer then yes on uh, waves of bliss Okay, great. And so that information, viewers, will be placed in the comments so you could always go back and see. So you can contact Katrina if you want to continue the conversation, have a consultation done. Katrina, how has COVID impacted you? Are you still offering services or your education services? How, how, how has it impacted you? What are you doing to get the message out to ladies? Well, it, it has, I mean, everyone has been impacted. So has my business as well, my businesses. Uh, but I, thankfully, from early on, I tapped into the UK market and the US okay. market. So I'm able to still offer distance learning courses okay. and, and whatnot. But, but I would say post-COVID, I honestly 
I cannot, I can't complain. I'm, I'm grateful. Mm. I'm really grateful because I think COVID, where we had the opportunity to just relax, just be, to, to stop for a moment, some have come out of that uh, appreciating more the, the um, services out there for that help with relaxing, yes. um, healing and whatnot. So I find that more are coming forward to do the v scene uh, massage therapy and whatnot so so i'm grateful i'm grateful it could definitely be worse seeing mm -hmm. these big businesses uh crumbling and going out of business so so i am grateful at the end of the day so wow. I, yeah just continue to strategize and and, yes. and stay, keep focus and i know you're well able to strategize you're a woman of strategy i know that uh katrina your distant education courses do you have a caribbean market taking advantage of these courses no not as yet unfortunately oh. it's the UK and the u.s markets US. Right now that are jumping on board but i love my caribbean people i love my barbadian people so yes i haven't left them out but you know this in this air in these these cultures you know because sometimes and i'm just going to tell quickly it's like you know it's still very much a taboo attach yes but, but you know it's, it takes out uh, awareness educating them and that's so that's what doing. Yes. just giving them the information guiding them and, and you know they're coming around they're coming yes. around slowly yes. but surely uh, but yeah oh, wow 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 I, I just see folks this is the reason why i brought her here to educate and to give good information so that you can now go back and consider and see for yourself okay this is what i need to do for my personal wellness katrina it has been a pleasure having you it has been like old times oh my yes. goodness and so we thank you for coming and sharing your nuggets with us your expertise so we have a better understanding of what we need to do to take care of ourselves as women holistically thank yes you. Yeah, I just want to remind you just one last thing before no go, problem. You go ahead. Movement is for the the supporting the optimal function of the vaginal canal. Okay, exactly. so remember that the flora it helps to promote that. So as far as uh, the fact that people will say that it helps to will increase the chances of in contracting a yeast infection, mm -hmm. that's not true. Once it's a professional professional therapist. You will yes. not have any issues like that. Wow, I like that. And, and we need to place confidence in the fact that you are trained and you know what you're doing. So someone like me, I, I wouldn't try it at home first. I would want to get it done and then probably. <laughs> so folks, if you're in Barbados, contact Katrina, get in on these services. It can only make your experience, and as she describes it, walking in your power even more powerful and if you are in trinidad and tobago wherever else you may be listening to this program still contact her and she will find a way to get this information and these services to you so this has been another episode of afternoon tea keep coming back because it can only get better katrina thank you once again until next time folks bye